yourself, man. Talk about that that game as a whole. Yeah, well, uh, a lot of people, a lot of people, especially now, would say, um, well, these days, would say uh, that must have been a boring game. Um, but when you look at it, when you get too well coached um, with personnel um, out in the ball game, uh, you would think that it would be low scoring and not um, an 80, 80 point total, you know, scoring out out out. Um, seven to three. Um, unfortunately, we gave up the only touchdown and didn't score any. Um, but it was it was a fight. It was one of the games. Uh, I don't know where where this stands um, now in today's game and how long did it did it last this way. But I know it was the first time um, I think in NFL history that um, every team leading their division lost the week before so um and that's when we lost to, to we lost to philadelphia so now that monday night game um that was the big build-up of the two undefeated teams now both of us come into the ball game with a scratch with the, with the one loss and we go into the ball game with the with the one loss and which one of us is getting ready to come out which one of us have recouped and last week was a fluke and you know we really should be that that undefeated team and we come up short um to san francisco yeah uh, 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 we wanted to play a, a fifth quarter unfortunately it's not a fifth quarter but we we still wanted to fight um and for ronnie you know i know the, you know the person he is um just to have some words you know even even if he said nice game you would you would have take you know taken it as uh, sarcasm in a way um because we both the two teams didn't like each other and we knew each other was was standing in the, the other team's way so uh, I, I don't know exactly what was said um phil never did discuss it with me i didn't ask him to be honest um but I know how I felt, and like Keena Turner is a um, was a good friend of mine, and I I couldn't uh, stop and talk to him. I didn't want to shake his hand, and, uh, and even after any of those games, it's just after the season. So, um, but we we got the opportunity um, to go back to the Candlestick and and make men of it of it all, and it was a much better outcome at the end of the game. <laughs> All right, let's fast forward to the, um, the playoffs. We beat uh, Chicago Bears. We beat them, uh, I think it was 31-3. The, game, the thing that stands out is the goal line stand for the goal. Um, John Washington made the tackle number 73. Your helmet came off. Talk about that uh, sequence as the Giants won 31-3 over Chicago. Yeah, yeah. I, um... I didn't even suppose that if you remember the play or seen the play, um, I I didn't suppose to, to take on the lead block. That's my guy running in motion. Technically, uh, on our goal line defense, I am a cornerback, so I'm I'm running with the guy in motion. But I I go I, I lead up because I, I know the freaking play, and um, and uh, Sawyer Sawyer Sawyer. Uh, he he was the lead block in the fullback, and he he runs up on me and he hits me and my helmet just pop off like a like a top. But I all I know is um, Neil Anderson needs to go on the ground, and so but John already had him. John uh, you know hit him well, and um, and that's what we do. We you know we still just try to uh, to add on and, and make sure that. Um, it's intimidation. It makes sure that Chicago know that it's not just you don't just deal with one of us. You got to deal with a, with a bunch of us. And um, helmet or no helmet, I'm, I'm still coming. Yeah. 
Okay, so now you play the 49s again. A great game, you know, low scoring. 15 13 was the final score. You ended the three the three beats. The quest for the 49s to get to three straight Super Bowl championships. They didn't work out. The game obviously known for Lev Marshall's hit on uh, Joe Montana. But the thing that stands out is Eric Howard's, you know, forced fumble on, you know, Roger Craig and LT, Lawrence Taylor, you know, recovered it. Just talk about that, you know, win. It was just a thrilling finish. Jeff Hosteller in the game, he dri driving, you know, the team down the field, and, you know, Matt Barr hits the field goal. Not an easy field goal to make on grass, especially. But let's talk about that win over your arch rival, San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, because um, if they, if they would have had uh, Parcells mic'd up um, in that, that series, you would have <laughs> you, you heard a lot because uh, he, Matt, he kept – Going to Matt and asking him, was he close enough? Was he was he close enough? And Matt would say no, and then Parcells would just turn away and kind of you know go to Kirsten <laughs> and and call another play. But um, we we knew we fought too hard. We just felt like we felt we fought too hard to go down there and the game um, just in the way uh, you know. They, that it didn't happen, that it was going to, before the Roger Craig fumble, that, you know, we did all this fighting and, and we don't we don't get another opportunity offensively because um, you also remember Haas went out the, the series before that. Matt Cavanaugh comes up in the game and um, can't say we, you know, you had the same confidence for him as we did for Hosteller when Sims went down. So, um, it was like we we need to some kind of way get them back on the field, but we weren't that team that you know. I know Lawrence is is um, uh, he should have that that the strip sack patent you know where he would come with his tomahawk, um, but we you know we we were in that era where I know myself that I would I never try to strip a ball away from somebody. Uh, it took a lot for me to, to learn how to coach stripping <laughs> stripping the ball from somebody. Um, fumbles were you knock the ball off of the guy, and that was that was a fumble. You hit him hard enough that um, that he drops the ball, or uh, you put your face on it. You put your face on the on the football. So for Eric Howard uh, to to slither his way um, through the, the offensive line, and that's exactly what he did. Craig tried to kind of adjust his, his movement, and he put his hat on the ball, and the ball came out, and, and Lawrence was, you know, it's just, he, he has a halo over his head. Um, and he, he goes and he falls on the ball, and it was just a matter of time. You know, it was, I, I, I think we all felt like, we, we can get this. We have a team that we can get this ball in field goal range. And we have um, the best kicker in his range um, in, in, in the league. So we just it was just a matter of time that we had to, to get him into his range. Okay, so you win that game 15 13. Now let's fast forward to uh, Super Bowl 25. Super anniversary of the Super Bowl. We played Buffalo. Buffalo, you know, coming off a big win against um, a blowout win against the Raiders, 51 to three. Talk about getting ready for that um, cake on the offense. You actually played them during the regular season and lost, but just talk about second time around getting ready for Buffalo to beat the Buffalo. Yeah, it's, exactly. And that you know, after we um, uh, we take the two losses in the season, then we. Not only do we take a loss to uh, Buffalo, but we take a severe, well, with, could have been a very severe loss, um, losing Phil Sims in, in the ball game also. So um, they they came to Giant Stadium and beat us. Um, we didn't we didn't like that too well. So it, to me, it was just it, it makes for a picture perfect story, right? Um, that we get the opportunity to play Buffalo in the biggest uh, game of the season. 
when they hurt our quarterback and when they show um, the world that um, they, they, they're semi-impossible to be stopped. But um, again, that, that Belichick guy, that Parcells guy, um, they had us where it, there was no selfishness um, uh, in our locker room. Guys uh, knew, you know, whatever was best for the team. We, we, we were ready to do whatever what was best for the team. And um, I had to, to play a defensive lineman. I played a defensive lineman. Um, play behind the line of scrimmage, you know, you, you, you sacrificed and you you did what was right. We, they, quite obvious, you know. You don't. We we have one guy that was considered a, a Hall of Famer out of out of that um, off that defense. Um, two, if you, when you count Harry, but we really had a lot more guys that was um, that was awesome and and did work. But unfortunately, it, it doesn't show in the stats and in the guys that don't really know football um, is being judged. Let me not run astray on that too long. But anyway, we just, it was it was fitting to me. It just made for a great story um, that we got the opportunity to play against Buffalo and to beat them uh, in, in a good old Giants way, that it wasn't going to be um, a blowout. We was going to, we made them play our, our game, even though they tried to do it their way. And when they tried to do it their way, they came up short, and they didn't get their field goal kicker in his field goal range. Okay, so you went 2019, uh, over missed it, I think it was 47 yards, you missed it to the right, and you second, you know, second time you're a champion again. And now, unfortunately, like, it's like the beginning of the end for this group to call the guys that you played with, because, you know, Parcells retires, and then 91-92, he's coached on your team, he's coached by Ray Hanley, and uh, you leave uh, the Giants to play with Cleveland Browns. Talk about that experience reuniting with uh, Belichick. Yeah, um, that, that that was my the second opportunity to try to repeat, and I I knew it was you know it was I was reaching that it, it wasn't going to happen. You know when those. Uh, when Parcells, uh, when Belichick left first, and then Parcells uh, retired after the draft, um, it was or right before the draft, I think. But it was it was um, it was hard to try to realistically feel that you know we had we was going to have an opportunity um, to repeat. But we wanted to play strong. We wanted to. We didn't want to to um, to go out and, and make it seem like we were still, you know, living on the the '90 season. Um, unfortunately, we end up 500. But we wanted it. We wanted more from the team. We wanted to um, uh, at least win double digits. At least go to the playoffs. Um, or make it to the Super Bowl and, and uh, I don't even talk about that that L word, but we we it was it was hard to realistically believe that um, we could do it without um, the full ship. We didn't have enough time to to just um, to mentally be prepared on how to how to do that. We, we tried to talk about it. it was a lot of guys um, speaking to me that was um, it wasn't their place um, and, it, and it made for a bad environment and guys just trying to do other things um, to make up for the people that was you know doing all the talking so it was a it was a rough year uh, coming back in in 91. And right when we thought that was bad, um, 92 just got worse. Okay, so yeah, like I said, go to uh, Cleveland. Uh, like I said, talk about that experience, you know, with, you know, playing with uh, Belichick, because now he was a defensive coordinator. Now he's, you know, a head coach. Just talk about playing with, you know, Cleveland, now that you're no longer a giant. 
Yeah, see, and it was, I, um, I, uh, I think I, I still, they're, they're still punishing me over there now because of some of the things I said and did um, during this given time that I, I was, I was so upset. I was so upset. Um, uh, just, you know, as a kid, you, uh, football was just more than just a game, you know, that, that yes, rivalries uh, were built, just like how you, was, you brought up the whole San Francisco stuff. Um, some teams, you just, if, if hey, you got to feed your family. I, I understand um, all of that, but there were just some teams that you couldn't leave the Giants to go to or – uh, some people coming to the Giants. It just it it, it, it seemed like no, it, like everybody you know you wanted everybody to think the same, but obviously we did. And for Dan Reeves to come to coach us, um, I, it, it just it, it didn't sit right in my belly. Um, and sure enough, it took him um, two years to get rid of all, any players that was on that uh, Super Bowl 21 team that, that was that was left over. So, um, yeah, I made comments of um, New Jersey Giants or Broncos or something like that. I, I, I called it, called us that, you know, it was, we were, we weren't looking um, ourselves. Um, I had a a coach come in and tell me um, that we can't we we can't make adjustments just because it's LT, and I'm like, uh, why can't we? <laughs> um, you know, we're I'm, we're capable of. We, you have enough guys here with um, a football that would have very high football IQs that um, we can make some adjustments where um, we have um, at the end, you know, at that given time, the premier pass rusher, and you want to be able to, you're trying to run a defense where the offense knew what we, you know, what we're doing, the strategy of our de- of, of our team or the theme of our team, they can line up in these type of formations and never get Lawrence to rush. And I, I just didn't settle well um, with me. So um, uh, they, they, they allowed me to stay there. I, I heard, you know, Coach Belichick had told me that it was, uh, he was trying to trade for me for, <laughs> since February. Um, but they, they wouldn't trade me. Uh, and then they, they ended up cutting me after, you know, the, the last cut. In, in nine, you know, yes, in ninety three, up in ninety three, and um, and so I was free. And first person that gave me a call personally was was Coach Belichick, and um, he called me, and it, it was a, it wasn't a, a hesitation that I was you know going to come to Cleveland because this was the guy that I started um, my career off with, and he made me a promise that if I continue to do well on special teams and, and work hard on the show team, that I was going to play more plays as the season progressed. And I end up playing in that 86 year, my, my rookie year, I end up playing more plays um, than Gary Reasons in the Super Bowl. So, um, concussion. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was that was a no-brainer for me to uh, to follow him in '93. So uh, 